A train is in the house, folks. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are covering a brief, hopefully brief, tutorial on the early access game Sim Airport. It's a tycoon style game where you build an airport. Seems pretty self explanatory. What I wanted to do today is give you a brief, and again, I emphasize the word brief. I'm hoping this doesn't drag on much longer than 15, 20 minutes. Overview of the user interface. I'm going to cover some other topics such as details on building. Uh, working the schedule and uh, things on research and whatnot in another video in order to try to keep this brief and help you get up and started playing this really cool game which is available on Steam. When you launch the game this is going to be the first screen you see they tell you they're in early access there's still a number of bugs in the game the devs are outstanding at working with you if you get on the Steam page that's what these links down here send you to the uh, Steam discussion board uh, the bug reporting board and the workshop where you can see uh, other people's work including my own uh, go check out my model of john wayne airport santa Ana, california and dayton international airport in dayton ohio uh, other than that you get the help and key commands button here which actually just shows you this button up here so let's close this we'll go around the screen clockwise and run through what you see at this point um, first thing is the help button these are your key commands as you can see, I'm moving the mouse around. Everything is basically GUI uh, interface. The one critical one I'd like to point out here is R. Rotate object in build mode. Uh, alternate is mouse wheel click. This allows you to turn things through 90 degrees and uh, change the orientation to something you like or allow you to place it in a place that you can uh, use. Uh, some things won't allow you to build, say, up against a wall in certain orientations, so you may have to change them. Uh, the, the angle and direction you've got them pointing or move them a tile away from the wall okay so these are the commands you can look through those that's on the help uh, button the menu here shows you uh, launching new games oh it shows you the the current access uh, access uh, release um, I am on the experimental server as opposed to the general server so you may see some things on here that aren't currently available on the general server however everyone's able to sign up for the experimental server all right there's instructions on the steam page for doing so and that gives you just a uh, a little more access to things that have just rolled out and uh, puts you in a position where you can help test and see if they work and give a lot of feedback to and receive feedback from the developers so that's what you can do uh, and uh, I highly recommend it so you can launch a new game there's some options there you can save your game load a game from here share your uh, airport on Steam Workshop uh, adjust your your preferences in the game uh, your video settings and exit the game now the critical thing here is if I hit this button boom we're done we're out of the game there's no master idiot do you really want to do this uh, question that pops up on the screen no you hit exit game you're gonna exit the game very simple all right research this is a button where uh, you unlock various things and you need to work through a sequence of events to unlock the financial side of things you've got to research a CFO which will cost you six thousand dollars and take ten hours of time in the game uh, and then you have to hire a CFO and build an office for them okay we'll explain that at a later time we'll go through that process so you can see how we do that all right the uh, things that the CFO will allow you to unlock and research include pricing which we'll talk about more in a bit. This is the most critical thing. It allows you to increase your fees and thus, thus make more money. Uh, you unlock bank loans and bank loans too, which allows you to borrow money. Uh, lower interest rates allows you to lower the interest rate on those bank loans. And um, do, 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 that is what the CFO has available. The COO, Chief Operations Officer, allows you to unlock several other things. The first thing I recommend here is uh, standby gates all right this allows you to set up a, a second gate as standby to another gate in case you have an aircraft that's late getting off the ground another one comes in it has another place to go uh, also you can unlock uh, road building multi-lane access light rail transit which you'll see the train over here on the left side uh, and they'll drop packs off here at your station or at your, your terminal and upgraded buses which increases the throughput capacity of packs at your terminal. Packs are passengers. That's what we're going to call them. PAX packs. Uh, those are passengers. All right. Across the top, you've got some information available here. This is your bank balance. How much cash you have. Um, 
You'll also see the estimates below that, the daily cash flow estimate of how much money you should have coming in. Currently, we have no flight income. We have staff expenses. That gets taken out hourly, as you see below in recent transactions. Uh, your wages come out, plus there's some infrastructure costs once you set up various things. Um, once you take on some flights, you'll have an estimated income based on if it's full and there's no cancellations. You see the fine print below the total there uh, of negative 4680. Estimated based on all flights being full and zero cancellations, zero delays, zero missed flights. Okay, so understand that your total that's shown is going to be the top end of what you could be making. Realistically, expect it to be, if you're doing things right, two-thirds to four-fifths of that amount. Okay, that's kind of the window I shoot for and that's a good place to be. As long as you're making money, you're happy but you want to be making as close to that daily cash flow estimate as possible, okay? Uh, below that, like we said, there's the recent transactions. Now, this isn't just things you spend money on. If you sign up a new flight, it will show bonus received from this airline of this amount. So it shows your income as well as your uh, expenses in that window, all right? Also, if you click on this, this will allow you to access bank loans once they are researched to increase the loan and decrease, and that's by 50 grand a pop. You can't just pay it back willy-nilly. You have to actually go in here and click on one or the other to uh, increase it or decrease it. And in decreasing it, it goes down by 50 grand each click, okay? You can't just have them take out $2,500 a month or what have you, or a day. Uh, they'll charge you $5,000 a day interest. So you want to also, if you're going to use it, research the lower interest. NA is currently, because there's no passengers, this is passenger satisfaction. It shows your total passengers, the arrivals, the departures, and it will give you an average of what they're all uh, feeling as far as their needs are. Uh, if they need bathroom, food, rest, money, um, if they want the airport to be cleaner, uh, if they want there to be better environment, if they need information, whatever they need, this will be indicated here. The higher your passenger satisfaction, the better. This uh, in turn uh, relates to the airline interest and that will be based on, as you can see, price sensitivity, passenger satisfaction, airport facilities, and more. So you want to have these two numbers be as high as possible, but this number helps generate this number. Okay, The airline interest is based in part on your passenger satisfaction. Now, if you click on this, it will show you airlines and available flights, how many you have with each given airline. When you start, you only have these four. There's a list of a bunch of different airlines. Okay. It tells you what they have flights available, what time of the day. AM is between, and this is when the plane must arrive in, on your schedule. The landing time or on gate time, okay, on your schedule, which we'll explain in a different video. Uh, 4 AM to noon is considered AM. Noon to 6 PM is considered PM. And 6 PM to 10 PM is considered night. Now, you can have aircraft take off after 10 PM, but you cannot have aircraft land after 10 PM at present. There, I suppose it could change in the future. There's people who have expressed interest in that. And like I said, the devs have been very uh, open to suggestion. We'll see if and when that comes down the pike. So what we're dealing with is your flight operations time is between 4 a.m. and 10 p.m. essentially. All right. Typically, you'll be done and planes will be out of your hair by midnight unless you're bringing in like a 747 at 10. And then they'll, it'll be sticking around until 2 a.m. and I recommend against that. All right, airport interest level is uh, the percentage of how they're interested in giving you flights. The higher this is, the more flights you'll get. Okay, so these guys are at 59%. They're offering four flights. These guys are at 45. They're only offering one. These guys are at 45. They're offering three. These are at 54, and they're offering two. Now, each airline has different requirements. Um, it may be better interest from passengers. Well, that makes sense. Uh, these guys want a runway PAPI. We'll explain that later when we're building. These folks down here, Super Alliance, have a bunch of requirements. These guys fly the bigger jets. You won't be seeing them right away because you've got to research a bunch of stuff and build a bunch of stuff. So you don't have to worry about that. And I, I, I highly recommend avoiding jumping right into the bigger jets from the get-go simply because you don't have the facilities to, to handle the passenger uh, throughput. And that means passengers coming into the terminal, they've got to go through ticketing, they've got to go through security, then they've got to get to the gate. Uh, and you've got passengers arriving on airplanes that have got to get out to baggage claim, get handled, and then get 
taken care of and taken away either in private vehicles or in buses uh, or in the light rail train, the new system that's uh, in work. Okay, so uh, the other thing across the top is sim weather. There's a winds here are the critical part. The direction the wind is blowing, airplanes take off and land into the wind. So currently with the winds blowing to the northeast, that means they're going from the southwest to the northeast. So this direction, planes would land on runway 27, which is facing west. They'll land going into the wind. It helps provide better lift, blah, blah, blah. All right. Now the winds are blowing right down the runway. So flight operations are going to be on runway 27. Takeoffs and landings will be here going this way. As this shifts, it may shift around to the west. And then you're coming in on runway 9. Okay. We'll see that later during play, gameplay when we have planes flying. The upper right corner tells you we're on day one. It's 12, 16 p.m. And I just hit the pause button. You can go one time speed, four times speed, or ten times speed, and then pause. All right. I recommend once you you pause, make a plan, do your planning, uh, and we'll touch on the planning tool a little later, uh, and then resume at speed. And I really think ten times speed is the way to go because it just keeps things moving and moves them faster and gets you where you want to be. Okay. So continuing around, status. This will show you all the flights that you have on your schedule. All right. So if we accept a flight, uh, it will not show up until tomorrow. And then you can look and see how the flight did yesterday. Maybe it got canceled yesterday due to a uh, failure to reserve a gate or a runway because maybe your schedule's a little too tight or maybe something uh, you've got a two hour window block for a, a plane and it actually takes two and a half hours to unload, clean and load the plane and get it off the gate. So you may have a flight that, that skips. If you, you have flights that cancel, you're going to wind up losing business with the airlines. All right. So this gives you an idea. Look at what's going on, what's left today and what's coming up tomorrow. Finally, on this screen down here at the bottom, airport status open and fully operational because we've got a drop off zone, a delivery zone, a security zone, at least one runway that's functional, a pickup zone, a ticketing zone and an airplane gate. All right. So these are all functional and we're good, uh, good to go. Schedule, we're not going to do a whole lot here because I'm going to do a separate tutorial on how to oper uh, work your schedule because there's a lot to it and it's taking up an inordinate amount of time in this video. So we'll come back to that showing your schedule. Pricing, I talked about earlier, you have to research the CFO, find them an office, research pricing. This allows you to charge more money per usage of your runway, which means every takeoff, every landing, you get this amount. And then this is terminal usage. This is per passenger, either coming into your terminal on a flight or leaving your terminal on a flight. This is how much you make off of each passenger. Okay. And you can raise and lower these prices as needed. Uh, and then you save them with the save button. And then they'll advise you that some uh, airlines are more cost sensitive than others. So you've got to be uh, wary of this. You don't want to just run these up to the max. You're going to scare off all your uh, airlines and then you won't make any money. And well, then you're done. All right. So that covers the lower right. Uh, also, you see down here, it shows us the, the build we're in. Across the bottom, we've got the planning tool, which allows us to lay out on the screen where we might want to do stuff. Taxiways, as you see here, this is the taxiway, is blocked out in a 10 by 10 box. Okay, So everything's in tiles. This is 10 by 10 uh, tiles. The runway is 10 by 90. Okay, Taxiways are 10 by 10. And this taxiway tool allows you to say, I'm going to build a new taxiway across here and then connect it here and that allows you to do that very quickly okay also it allows you to run you know a do a runway like I said a runway is, is 10 by 90 and it will show you what you're building so if you built a new runway down here on the south side that is what it would look like it would take up that much space okay and then you also can use this tool for your gates this is the smaller of the two currently available gates this is what is kind of called, uh, there's an L on it in the build menu, and then the other one has an XL on it. Let's just say this is the smaller of the two gates. It is 20 tiles by 20 tiles, okay? And the way you can mark this on here is that, that, boom. Now I can tell that's where I'm going to put my next gate. Now, there's a bigger gate, and it's 30 by 30. So if I'm going to put one of those here, let's mark that out. There's 10, 20, 30 tiles, and then 10, 20, 30 tiles. That's how much space that bigger gate will take up. So obviously I've got a plan for my terminal maybe to take up more space like this. Okay, so that's how the planning tool can help. Now you can get more detailed 
with the yellow, magenta, white, and cyan. So if this is going to be my next gate, all right, there's some things I know here, all right. I'm going to grab the cyan color. Here's a gate that's a smaller, it's a 20 by 20. If I start right here at the edge, there's one, two, three squares, and then there's room for a door, which is right at the jetway. So I know if I start here, I go one, two, three, and I can make a block of four across there. I know that's where that jetway is going to line up when I build that next gate. Okay. Now, say I want to mark off the walls. Well, uh, we know this is gate all the way up to this point here. So let's make the wall go like this, down to here, and then down to here. You see how this is working out? Everything will show you how much space it's going to take up. And then it will also, if you're building something, it will show you what the cost is projected to be, okay? Um, when you're doing the using the build menu, we'll get to that in just a minute, all right? So that's kind of how the planning tool works. If you want to get rid of something, let's say we're not going to build this runway, you click clear, you just highlight it, and you release the mouse button, and boom, it's gone, all right? Reports, uh, secure areas show the difference between the area that's within security, which is green, and that's separated by the fence and the building and the security zone. And then outside security is the other side of all that. All right. You can also look at your environmental heat map and info heat maps. Uh, environmental heat map is uh, determined by where you have little decorative plants and things. So it kind of makes a more pleasant environment for your passengers. The info heat map is where you have flight information boards and they put off a little bigger circle. The environmental heat map, so maybe you have a plant right here, it puts off a circle about this big. All right. But if you put an info board here, it puts off a circle about this big. And those tie in to your passenger needs. If they need information, if they need environment, that makes them happier. All right, so this just gives you a way to see where you have those uh, areas of coverage going on in your terminal space. Also, there's sectors, which has ticketing, security. It tells you whether it's secure or not, indoor secure, indoor secure, 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 and then this is not secure, and it tells you how big it is tile-wise. Uh, you also see where your zones are marked over here, storage sector, drop-offs, garbage, pickups. These are flexible, we'll move those around here, all right? So that's the things you also see here. And then there's profit and loss, which you cannot pull up this report until you hire and build an office for a CFO, all right? Q lines, Q lines are important in the game. We build these to guide packs to ticketing desks, to security, and to gate agent desks. So we have a little bit of organization. If you do not use these, then they'll just bum rush the desk and you'll wind up with a huge clump of people there and it just is really unruly. Um, there's a couple of things to these though, uh, as far as tricks of the trade and how to do that. I'll get into that in the tutorial uh, number two on basics of the game here, okay? So we'll deal with those in just a, uh, another video in order to keep this one brief. Utilities, this deals specifically with baggage, baggage routing, all right? Your uh, ticket desks have to be connected and they have this little thing on the side here, this little conveyor start. See it says the bag on there and what have you. All right, that ties into the conveyor line, which connects to the baggage routing station. I'm going to turn on the conveyor line. See, the uh, this this is effectively an underground view. The blue arrow on the ticket desks have to hook to the blue arrow on a baggage routing station. And likewise, the pink arrow on the baggage routing station, which I'm going to drop, I'm going to show you one here real quick. All right, see how there's a pink arrow and a blue arrow? These have got to be right up against the taxiway, and you can rotate them with the R key. Um, and they have to be connected to the ticketing desks, blue to blue, and they have to be connected to baggage uh, carousels, which you put down here in baggage claim, and that is pink arrow to pink arrow. They're connected via the, the conveyor line, which is built underground, so you don't see it until you hit this button. You'll, you'll notice a little bit of torn up turf, kind of making a line when you build them, but other than that, it, they're basically underground, so you don't see them. Uh, if you want to get rid of them, you demolish, now, baggage routing station, if I wanted to get rid of this, and this is the case with mo uh, with any item, if I'm paused and I've built it, I've committed to buying it. But if I don't like where it is, I can right-click and cancel the project, and that gets rid of it. If I built a length of conveyor line, say I went from this one to this one, and oops, oh, that's not really what I want to do. It costs me money. The parts are going to be delivered to my delivery zone, but I can right-click and cancel the project and get rid of it. All right? So that's a, a building basic, although I really didn't want to get into that in this video. All right, what else are we looking at in the terminal? We have zones. Notice there's female restrooms and male restrooms. When you build a restroom, you have to zone them male or female. Uh, one key difference here, 
You don't see it here, but in the objects, there are urinals you can put in the male restrooms. They only function in the male restrooms. All right. You also have a security zone, which takes up a space that divides your unsecure area from your secure area. Okay, and this is where your bag scanners and ID check stands, metal detectors and body scanners are located with your security personnel. Okay, uh, so that's critical. You've got to have that. The airport will not function if it's not secure. You'll get a master idiot uh, alert up here that looks like a, a red exclamation point, and it will say requires secure area. Okay, uh, ticketing, you've got to have your ticket desk inside the ticketing area as well as your ticketing kiosks. And in baggage claim, you've got to have the uh, baggage carousel in baggage claim zone or it will not function. Outside the build, oh, inside the building also you can build cafes and kitchens which go with the uh, cafes uh, to provide them food and drinks. And then there's a list here you'll see of all the stuff they're required. Outside the building, you've got a garbage zone. This is where your janitors hang out and they bring bags of garbage out too. You can build dumpsters in there to increase the capacity. Um, Drop-offs are where vehicles will uh, stop and drop off packs coming to your terminal on outbound flights. Pickups, the opposite. Packs leaving the terminal get picked up by the pickup zone. Down here you see deliveries and you see the workmen hanging out and storage. Deliveries is where a truck comes and it drops stuff off for them to go build. If it's not immediately built, they'll move it into the storage area. Otherwise, they'll carry it in and build it where you've assigned the place uh, to do so. If you disassemble something, dismantle something, say you want to get rid of a toilet in the men's restroom, I just left clicked on it, you push dismantle, and that will set it up for, for dismantling. But I can cancel that as well. Right click, cancel. Okay? Um, so the workmen hang out in the delivery zone. Now, here's the one thing I don't like about this setup. You can remove zones, and this is the standard uh, default way it's set up. You just mouse over it, click, and boom, it's gone. The key thing is you get, uh, you can change the size of zones too. You can add more, you can reduce. The key thing is garbage and deliveries require trucks, which tie up the roads, which tie up buses with packs on them. You don't want to tie up your packs. Getting to your airport, leaving is a different story. But getting to the airport, you want them there on time to make their flight. So we're going to put the drop-off zone up here by ticketing, okay? It doesn't have to be real big. Boom, that's there. And then we're going to go down here to the pickup zone, which is right there. And we're going to put it out front here next to baggage claim. So packs will come off the flight. They'll come out here. They'll either get bags or they'll come straight out to pickups. They'll get picked up by a bus and taken on their way home. Okay? So that's how that works. But this moving garbage and deliveries beneath, because this road runs downward. Okay? You'll see the bus come along. I'm going to go ahead and uh, push time here. See, there they go. Here comes the delivery truck. See how it got held up? Now it's dropping stuff off. Now they quickly moved that over to, and this is uh, conveyors, baggage routing station, conveyors, okay? So that's how that works. We paid for it, we got the parts, they're now in storage. So when we go back and rebuild them where we want them, they're on site, which is a very effective way to speed up your building process. All right, so that's zones. Staff is where you hire people. We have three security, three staff uh, security people. You need one per each of these items. Okay, you put one at the ID check stand, one at the bag scanner, and one at the metal detector or body scanner. Don't mess with cutting short on your security. Have one per item. You have to have one at the metal detector. But what will happen is they'll have to bounce around from item to item, and that slows down the throughput, and that makes your people late for their flights. That pisses them off, and then you wind up losing flights and money. Not good. Workmen, that's kind of self-explanatory. Each of these people have a hiring cost and then an hourly cost, and you'll see that come out hourly in their wages. All right, so you see it right here, wages, $60 security uh, 32 minutes ago. It was at the top of the hour when all the wages came out, okay? Uh, food worker, that's only when you have a cafe and a kitchen. COO and CFO is only when you have researched them. And there's zero of one because you can only have one of each, all right? Uh, objects, let's go over here to making things happen. There's an extra large gate. I'll show you how this works based on what I did a little while ago with planning. So we, we plotted for a second large gate. You've got to rotate it so it faces the correct direction. This is the correct direction towards the uh, terminal. All right. And then we've got an extra large gate. And there it is. It fits right in that spot we made of 30 by 30 tiles. Okay. Um, they have prices for everything. It tells you 
the, these don't require other materials. The things in here, boom, you plop it down, it's going to get built. All right. Now, the runway is a single unit, which is why it's under here and not under build. They'll bring in asphalt and paint, and then the, your workers will go out and build it. Um, and then you can upgrade it to add lights and whatnot. And then there's a bunch of other things here, including stuff to equip out your bathrooms, your kitchens, uh, the terminal area, uh, flight info displays, plants, electronics vending, food vending is very important, doors to separate areas, uh, baggage carousels, benches for people to sit on. Everything's alphabetized in this menu. Once you get up to 10 flights to go more, you have to build an air traffic control tower inside the secure area and it takes up seven by seven tiles on the ground. Okay, so uh, and then we've got the build menu, which is where we build things to build other things. So the critical thing here is foundation. So we have this new section. We're going to build the foundation. Look here. We click and drag. It says that's going to be three hundred thousand dollars because foundation is expensive. We don't have enough money for that now, so we won't be building that today. But we can build it at a later time when we have some more money. Um, if you need to clear something. You can click on the individual item and then click dismantle, or you can click on say, I'm gonna take out these three to uh, toilets and put in urinals in their place. You can cancel that, right click, cancel project, okay? Because I did them as a group, you can cancel it as a group, okay? Uh, fencing, you've gotta have fencing to divide the secure area from the non-secure area. Now, I highly recommend you build gates in the fencing, outside gates, outdoor gates, outdoor gates. Put these in the fencing. You can do this while you're building them or after you've built them. Put one here at the south side of the building and one at the north side. That's so that your workers can cut through there. So if they were going to go build this, if I did not have these gates, they would have to go through the terminal, out this door here, which looks janky if they do it anyway. And then they have to come around here to drop off the materials and start building. With this gate here, they go right through the gate and go straight to their workspace and it's more efficient, okay? That's how that works. There's a bunch of floor coverings. As you see, if I zoom in, you can see the texture on the floor here is this floor number one, all right? This speeds up your pack's movement, all right? There's a five, uh, plus 5% five movement speed. Uh, outdoors, sidewalks speeds it up by 10%, and the cost is indicated by meter square. Finally, uh, let's see, roads, these are locked. When you unlock them, roads come in a two by two section. Uh, so it's four square tiles that uh, pop up when you build a road. So instead of, which sidewalk is one square, road is one, two, three, four. All right, that's the difference. That's a tile of sidewalk, this is a tile of road, okay? Taxiway, on the other hand, is a 10 by 10 square. And there's the difference, there's taxiway or runway, which comes as a 90 by 10 single unit. All right, so that's how that looks. Uh, taxiways, I've explained that. Uh, walls is how you section off parts of your terminal. So say I wanted to put in an office for the CEO. Let's uh, briefly say uh, we're going to give him a, a three by three office. There's two by two, two by three. Let's put it here. All right, we're going to go into build menu and we can use walls or windows and we're going to build a wall to here and here and here and here. And then go back to objects. There's a door. We don't want to put it that way. We want to put it that way. And boom, that's going to be the office. Then we go in the uh, items here. Here's the office desk. Uh, we'll put that there and an office chair and we'll put that there and then when we hit build our people are going to come zipping along once the delivery truck comes there's a bus here comes the delivery truck it's going to drop off the items needed to build the walls and the desk and the chair and the door and the workers are going to come in and do all that okay also they're going to build these gates because I assigned them to build the gates too all right so that uh, pretty well covers the basics of the user interface here on Sim Airport. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please ask. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. I forgot, put, I'm pushing 300 hours in the game. So it's a little ridiculous, but I do kind of know what I'm doing at this point. And I've been working very closely with the development team in getting bugs worked out and new things added to the game, okay? So uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below. Uh, or hit me up on Steam. I'm under A Train and uh, I'm on the discussion boards all over it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, if I can do things better, please let me know. I'm happy to take comments and constructive criticism. And uh, hopefully you'll stick around because I'll have more videos coming soon. You'll check those out. Tell your friends about it. 
and tell your friends about Sim Airport because it's really cool. It's available now on Steam. Early access, only 20 bucks, but you'll get plenty of hours of enjoyment out of it. Okay? So I want to thank you again and wish you a good day.